clearer than a memory. And I heard the sound of thundering hooves, splintering shields and ringing swords. And I placed my air upon the iron throne. And all the dragons roared as one. Emma and Olivia, how are you both doing today? Good. Right, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so this is huge. Just even watching the first episode, which uh, we haven't been properly introduced to you as of yet. No. Yeah. But what was both of your first days like? Because this feels like walking onto the set in costume, in the wigs. Uh, you know, huge. My first day was really odd. I'd, I'd chipped my tooth the night before <laughs> and I didn't discover it until the morning of and I've still got the ch t chip I haven't got it fixed but I was <laughs> woke up like this and it was much bigger like by feeling it with my tongue than it was actually in the mirror um, yeah and that really that's the answer you were looking <laughs> <for>? <laughs> yeah. it, was, it went in a direction I wasn't expecting but <laughs> I'm just in, I'm properly just going from the stream of consciousness now. I'm so, I'm so I really love it. I, wonder, open. I wondered where the story was going to go. Well, no, because I did Alan Carr's podcast the night before. <laughs> and, I'd, and I wasn't getting picked up till 11. And I'd brought around a bottle of wine to Alan, because I'd never met him before. And I was like, a bottle of wine? And then we had loads of wine. And so I was a bit hungover, actually. For my, and then had a chip too. <laughs> All right. For the biggest job of my life. How unprofessional. All right. It was a very tiny scene. It's, it's all up from there. It's though. all up from there. Exactly. So that's, yeah, that's it okay. was. It was all up from there. Um, Top uh, that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, can't. We were lucky. We had a bit of rehearsal before we started shooting, so we didn't have to uh, turn up at the castle on day one, which mm -hmm. I think I was grateful for because I had to meet. Um, I'd met Olivia, mm. but I hadn't met Paddy Considine or Reese Evans or Matt Smith, really. Um, Actually, I think think I'd met anyone apart from you, and yeah. uh, I'm a very anxious person, so it was it what? was good to yeah. <laughs> uh, it was good to have a bit of time to approach people in sort of approach people individually and um, say a very shy hello. Uh, yeah, and then down the line, we got a sort of tour around King's Landing, which was incredibly surreal. Was there any hesitancy at all signing on for this because the fan base for this are you know, unique. Yeah. And the, the the first show is one of the biggest shows ever made. Um, is there like any hesitance where you're like, like maybe not, or, yeah. or you just throw yourself in going, I know Miguel is here, we're in safe hands. I think we had all of those <laughs> all of thought them. processes. Yeah. I literally made a pros and cons list. Mm. Oh, wow. Because, the, because it's a big decision and... Yeah, it's um, life altering. It is, it is. And and simultaneously, um, and we've sort of talked about this, but the, simultaneously the auditions process um, was like three months long. So and there's, so there's also the energy of like, you've invited someone into your life, mm -hmm. uh, this character into your life. That's also pretty persuasive. Yeah. So that, yeah, I don't know, there's a, there is a lot to weigh up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because, you know, if you take on that responsibility, um, you want to do a good job and you're trying to weigh up if, if you, yeah, if you're, you know, the right person to do that. I'm mentally ready for that as mm. well. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but knowing that you're not, that's, that's half the battle, so it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, fine. Problem shared is problem hard. Exactly. <laughs> I think people, when they, when they think of the original Game of Thrones now, they're like, oh, it's huge and it's epic and there's massive battles and all that stuff. But that didn't really come in until later. Like, the, the first season or so is a lot of character work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of political intrigue and skullduggery and stuff like that for this you, you might already know because you've I, I assume finished filming the first season completely now yeah. is there huge action set pieces in the first season or does it hark back to now we're gonna you know lay out the chessboard first before we start knocking people off and violently sort of both yeah i would say both yeah. things are true like it's a story that really starts in the family home um which I think is very, like a very like generous introduction to mm. a whole new cast of characters. Simultaneously, you've got Miguel Sapochnik directing, so you'd be mad not to use him. Uh, I mean, he kind of finds scale in everything he shoots, whether it's like a small two-person um, duologue or it's like these epic... But knowing what he's capable of from mm. episodes like Battle of the Bastards, yeah, I, th I think it would be crazy not to... Include. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that we, we do have some proper epic stuff to look forward to in this season. Oh, yeah. There's a lot yeah. to look forward to. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. That, that's exciting. <laughs> and the, I think it's the very first kind of introductory subtitle. Where it's, it's very close to the start anyway, where it's specifically it's like 172 years before the birth of Daenerys. And this show, from my perspective, and I know I've only, I've only seen the first episode, but it sort of hinges on men in power will do literally anything to make sure that women do not get into power and women do not have any kind of control, which does kind of hark back to the original show. But it's also, for a show that feels like it was set thousands of years ago, in the fantasy land, mm -hmm. is very topical and current. 100%. So when you were reading that, you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's relevant. Yeah, yeah, completely. And then even now when it's coming out, you're like, and you know, with Roe v. Wade in America, it's just even, you know, more topical on us and I feel like you know the positive side of me is 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 very hopeful in how progressive we are especially um the the younger generations but yeah it's just it feels like this 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 dinosaur's last croak at, at control mm -hmm. and I feel like you feel that in our fantasy show yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know <clears throat> yeah I think um I mean I think yeah that it is like an interrogation of patriarchy and uh, of the nuanced way in which patriarchy seeks to consolidate male power is probably, yeah, certainly one of the reasons that we're like both sat here. Mm. Um, I think like, <clears throat> I've spoken about this before, but I think one of the kind of acute, uh, I don't know, questions that the show asks is, yeah, if you are like a woman looking to rule, how do you convince an electorate? How do you convince male subjects that you're not other? Mm. Um, and, it, and I don't think it offers like answers to that question, but I do think it sits with that complexity, um, which feels like wildly pertinent because we we choose male leaders. We do. That's what we do. So fantastic, Emma and Olivia. Thank you so much for your time thank today. You. My pleasure.